that when you look at a painting, you are really looking at several art elements composing it. But what are the elements and principles of art and how do they compose a painting? This is what we will discuss and describe in this vlog. In simple terms, the elements of art are parts that make up the whole. These are often described as methods or components in the visual arts. There are typically seven primary elements of art, namely color, volume, line, shape, form, texture, and space. The first element of art is color. Color is a critical art element because it shows us, the viewers, what the artwork is about. It can also evoke strong emotional responses and when applied strategically, it can create a well-balanced visual composition. It is versatile and can convey realism, naturalism, and more abstract ideas. Each color has three properties, U, Volume, and Intensity. U is the name of a color. Volume is a color's lightness or darkness, which is altered when black or white is added. Intensity refers to the intensity of a color, often measured by boldness or dullness. Let's take an example of Paul Klee's artwork. In his painting, Paul Klee shows contrast between high intensity and low intensity colors by using more or less water with his paint. Color value is another art element that relates to color. It refers to the light or dark quality of color. This is when white or black is added to a color. When white is added, it is referred to as a tint and black is otherwise referred to as a shade. In this example of volume in art, Rufina Tamayo adds white to a color to create a tint in the clothes of the women, one of the baskets, and in the checkerboard on the wall. Another art element is line. Line is an important art element and is found in almost all types of artworks, providing the fundamental structure for the subject matter. From short, long, vertical, horizontal, diagonal, um, curved, straight, thin or thick, Lines can vary in length and shape. In this example of expressive lines in art, Edvard Munch uses wavy lines in contrast with a long straight diagonal line to convey anxiety. Texture. Texture is the element of art that refers to the way things feel or look as if we may touch it or feel it. In the portrait of the ill-fated French queen, Marie Antoinette and her children, the artist Marie-Louise Elizabeth Vaigue Lebron painted a wide range of different textures. There is a distinctive feel to the different materials used for the garments. Other kinds of textures are noted in the heavy woven carpet, the wooden furniture, and the smooth soft skin of the figures. When painters try to make objects look rough or smooth, they are using a technique known as simulated or artificial texture. And here in the Philippines, we have Jeff Kaplok's painting that shows a fine textured face of a woman. Can you point it out? Texture and Sculpture Texture is very important to sculpture. In visual art, texture is the perceived surface quality of an art. It may be perceived physically through touch or to the sense of vision or both. Shape and Form Shape refers to a two-dimensional area clearly set up with one or more of the visual elements such as color, volume, texture, line, and space. Facts about shapes. Shapes are flat. They are only limited into two dimensions, which is length and width. This two-dimension character of shapes distinguishes it from form. While form is a three-dimensional object, for examples are the architecture, like we have here in cities like buildings, churches, houses, and so on and so forth. Mass and volume. Mass and volume are the two important features of form. Mass refers to the outside size, while volume refers to the space within the form. So here in Philippines, we have the painting called The Fisherman by Ang So Ang is very famous for his distinct cubis, and as you can see in his painting, it has a lot of shapes and forms. Space. Space can be thought as the distance or area between, around, above, below, or within things in art. Space is an element that can be either three-dimensional or two-dimensional. For the example of this element, we have the painting of Giorgioni, which is called the Adoration of Surfers. In his painting, he created a sense of three-dimensional space 
by using five techniques. And these are size, placement, distance, color, and lines. In size, distance shapes are made smaller and closer shapes are made larger. In detail, distance shapes are shown with less detail and closer shapes are shown with greater detail. And when we talk to color, these net shapes are colored with hues that are duller and appears to bluer, suggest that layered of atmosphere between viewer and those shapes. Last but not the least is line. So in the, the horizontal lines of shapes are slanted to make them appear to extend back into space. Now, let's proceed to the principles of art. So, what is the purpose of having these principles in our art piece? Principles of Art Artists design their works by controlling and ordering the elements of art in some way. When trying to combine these different elements into an organized whole, they use certain principles or guidelines. There are eight principles of art, namely, balance, emphasis, harmony, variety, gradation, movement, rhythm, and proportion. Let's talk about balance. There are eight principles, and the first one is balance. So balance is the way of combining elements to add feeling of equilibrium or stability to a work of art. There are three kinds of balance, and the first one is symmetrical balance. Symmetrical balance means a formal balance in which two halves of a work are identical one or one half mirrors. And also, the other examples of symmetrical balance is Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. As you can see, the apostles sitting next to the central figure of Jesus Christ are all different. However, the background is rendered in similar shapes on the left and the right hand sides. The second kind of balance is asymmetrical balance, which is more informal and takes into account such qualities as whole intensity and value in addition size and shape. All of these qualities have an effect on the apparent weight of objects shown in a work of art. The example of asymmetrical balance is Vincent van Gogh's The Starry Night, which depicts a tree filling the leaf hand side with only the moon and the stars. You can see in the painting, the placement of these objects creates an overall balance effect. Have the one side is darker and heavier in shape than the other side lighter and smaller shape, thus playing off one another. Third kind of balance is fragile balance and it occurs when objects are positioned around a central point. The Wistrow's window of Chartres Cathedral France is an example of this. The second principle of art is emphasis or contrast. It is a way of combining elements to stress the differences between those elements. Contrasting elements often are used to direct and focus the viewer's attention on the most important parts of a design. An example of this is in Rainy Night Downtown Painting by Georgia Mills Giso. Around the edges, she uses larger shapes that are brighter and more loosely defined. The contrast between both the colors and the shapes gives the scene vitality. The third principle of art is harmony. Harmony is refers to a way of combining similar elements in an artwork accent the similarities. It is accomplished through the use of competitions and subtle gradual changes. A limited number of like elements often are used in an effort to tie the picture parts together into the harmonious wall. This is certainly evident in Robert Dolanay colorful Portuguese still life painting. We can observe in his painting how the repetition of certain colors, values, lines, and shapes gives the work an overall sense of unity or wellness. What is a variety and how is it used? So, a variety is refers to the use of different elements or forms in an artwork to create interest, contrast, and visual complexity. So, this can include the variations in color, texture, shape, size, and other visual elements. So, it is used to create visual interest and to prevent an artwork from being monotonous or repetitive. In other words, a variety is achieved by using diversity in different visual elements to add visual interest to a composition or an artwork. One of the examples is The Planting Rice by Fernando Amorzola. It is a painting that is, uh, through the use of color, the painting features the range of earthy colors, including the shades of green, brown, and yellow, which create a sense of unity and harmony within the painting. The bright blue of the sky and the colorful clothing of the farmers add contrast and visual interest.
Gradation is refers to the gradual progressive and change in one or more visual elements in an artwork. This can include changes in value, size, shape, and other visual elements. It is a gradual progression or transition of visual elements to one end of another composition. In the Philippines, one of the best examples of this is the Bayanian by Carlos Francisco, which is also known as Botol, and during it was 1950. So the Bayanian, uh, it is how the principle of gradation can be used in a painting to create a sense of depth, atmosphere, and movement within a complex composition. So the Francisco used uh, of subtle graduation of color and tone along with his mastery of atmospheric perspective that creates a vivid and engaging work of art that celebrates the communal spirit of the Filipino people. So, movement is refers to the visual flow or progression of an artwork. So this includes the use of directional lines, repetition, or other visual elements to create sense of motion and action. Movement can be used to create a sense of dynamism and energy in an artwork and to guide the viewer's eye through the composition. One of the best examples of this in artwork is the, entitled The Progress of Medical in the Philippines. So it's also from by Carlos Batang Francisco. So the painting is a mural located at the Philippine General Hospital in Manila under the effects of evolution of medicine in the country. So throughout the painting, there are dynamic swirling lines and figures that suggest the movement and progress. For example, in one section of the mural, there are uh, figures shown performing traditional healing practices with swirling lines and movements indicating their energy and vitality. Rhythm. The principle of movement is closely related to rhythm. Rhythm is created by the careful placement of repeated elements in work of art to cause a visual tempo or beats. These repeated elements invite the viewer's eye to jump rapidly or glide smoothly from one to the next. The same shape may be repeated several times and arranged across the picture to create a sensation of movement in a certain direction. One of the examples of rhythm is in John Singer Sargent's painting below, which is entitled Fisher Woman, and it is painted on 1913. So it has a strong graphic rhythm, which is created by the contours in the water. The rhythm is stronger and more defined closer to shore. This rhythm is broken down by the fisherwoman. That is what painting is all about, creating a rhythm using patterns and shapes and breaking that rhythm with powerful statements. The following example is Anita Purpose Magsasai House painting entitled Fish Harvest at Dawn, wherein the use of the continuous overlapping fishnet and diluted water creates a smooth flow of rhythm. The rhythm is stronger and more defined closer to shore, which is similar to John Singer Sargent's painting. It is broken down by the existence of the figurine-like humans, which resulted in an organic feel to the painting. The piece manifests rhythm through the use of repeated shapes and patterns, and its visual context is completed through breaking it. Now, let's proceed to proportion. So proportion, it is the principle of art concerned with the relationships of certain elements to the whole and to each other. Proportion often is closely connected with emphasis. It is the relationship between the size of parts within a composition, specifically in terms of their dimensions. These parts can be anything from an object to a person's body parts or facial features. In order to understand more about proportion, we will now introduce the types of proportion in art. So there are several types of proportion in art, namely altered, hierarchical, out of proportion, and standard proportion. Discovering design relationship in art. In order to discover design relationships in art, the design chart can help us identify the many possible relationships between elements and principles in works of art. The first step in determining how a work is put together is to ask the right questions about it. The design chart helps us identify these questions. So, let's begin with any element and then referring to the chart. Ask yourself, this element is used in the work. So, your questions will link the element with each principle. For instance, you may begin with an examination of a painting by looking at the hue, then referring each principle in order. You would ask and then answer questions such as these about the work. So, once you have completed an examination of hue, turn to the next quality of color, which is intensity, and repeat the procedure with all of the principles. An analysis carried on this manner can help you gain the knowledge and understanding needed to determine how the parts of a picture have been put together to achieve unity. A work of art is made of many different colors, values, lines, textures, shapes, form, 
space, relationships. The artist who creates it must combine these elements into an organized whole, and this takes a great deal of knowledge and skill. When viewing a work of art, you must determine how the artist has done this, and that too takes a great deal of knowledge and skill. When you have the knowledge and skill, you are able to do more than merely look at a painting. You can see it, and you can appreciate it. That's all for today, and thank you for watching our educational vlog. Bon voyage!